Hi guys, I hope you have a wonderful day and welcome back. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I am away from my garden for the whole week. So long. I never been away from the garden this long and look everything growing so much in just one week. And uh, some of my tomato also you know get some disease such as powdery mildew uh, so I have a lot of work to do in the garden so in this video I will take you along on how I uh, clean up the garden and make it look alive again and this bed is the squash and zucchini bed if you check on my last video uh, on how to grow squash and zucchini vertically I pruned out a lot and now look at that in just one week everything growing so much and this is the cucumber melons produce a lot of fruit i picked a whole you know a handful for the snack and look at this big boy so look i need to harvest some of the swaths and zucchini and also prune out all the bottom leaf and start tidying along the stake and for this one all i need to do there's no powdery mildew at all which is i am surprised uh, because of i prune before i left uh, i prune out really nice and clean and growing vertically so after a week there's no powdery mildew not even a single dot and my herbs garden doing great except my deals turning a little yellow i need to prune all of those yellow uh, leave out and give a little bit more fertilizer for the booze and the mints doing great basil and strawberry uh, my green onion the chive look the blossom oh i've been waiting for this that's so cute um and the basil doing great the cilantro kind of look dead and this thai basil also having a lot uh, growing so much and uh, my rosemary also get the powdery mildew so I need to prune those out and tomato not doing so well uh, but you guys the zinnia produce a lot of flowers different colors different variety and this beautiful butterfly such a perfect timing oh my god it's so pretty gorgeous and if you look at this view look at the plumbago that along the fence it's grow over the seating area so i need to prune those out as soon as possible uh, because that is the place that i enjoy my coffee and tea every day i just love how the zinnia grow along this fence now it's growing so tall over the fence with different colors and this yellow one is gorgeous and look at the butterfly so beautiful the wings just so gorgeous and based on my experience zinnia growing well if you grow from seed you can either direct sow or you sow in a seedling cup and this variety it's so beautiful look at that it's so fluffy uh, I got the seed from I think this the store that I got from Baker Creek seed uh, They have so many different variety of flowers and vegetable and my lobel lobelia Completely gone because you can see the dense. It's my dog. He Loves strawberries. So he went through this uh, uh, lobelia to go to the strawberry tower on the other side of the garden. So, I mean, like, he kind of smart, you know, try to figure it out. I blocked the garden when I'm away, but then he figured out to go through that uh, lobelia side to get to the, uh, the strawberry tower. All right, anyway, for this bed, growing so well, I don't really need to do anything here. Uh, maybe I just give some fertilizer and water and should be done and all my soybeans are starting to produce the pot you guys can see this soybean growing so well this year last year I did grow some but it then got attacked by some sort of disease and gone and die 
but this year they are very healthy and this one is one of my favorite peppers this is called chenzo peppers it's it's spicy but to me it's kind of mild but for some people they say it's spicy but to me it's mild it's beautiful colors and i love it a lot and this is all bell peppers uh, different colors of bell peppers so this bed is doing so well no disease nothing and i love it a lot and for my lettuce bed oh by the way my agapanthus growing so well the purple flowers there uh, and growing a lot of new blooms too and for lettuce lettuce is growing but as not as healthy because uh, some of them damage from the sun because I did not didn't have a chance to cover up and also damage from the birds yeah birds and pomegranate growing wild i need to prune some of the branches that don't produce any fruits so to clear out some space a little bit and look at around this area specimen doing so well but half like half of the tree cover up with the the by the pomegranate so i maybe need to do some pruning but specimen doing well and plumbago this area <laughs> yeah definitely i love the flowers the flower is so beautiful almost like hydrangea and it's like the indigo purple uh so pretty but also need to haircut also around this area as well right now everything's so crowded in the garden uh, and need a major pruning on some of the plants uh, pomegranate growing crazy this year produce a lot of flowers a lot of fruits just look at that we're gonna have tons of fruit and around this area sunflower I didn't plant this one I think uh, it's from the birds uh, food that they dropped the seed there and fava beans look at these chunky beans I love this bean so much. Uh, if you harvest it young, you can eat the whole pot. Just, you know, grill, marinate with some um, olive oil, salt, peppers, or ranch powder, or parmesan cheese. It's so good. And you also can get uh, cooked the beans from the inside, uh, add into soup or stir fry. And I have strawberry down here. I need to pr uh, clear out around this area too because it's kind of too overcrowded. And look at this powdery mildew. Oh my gosh. Cover up this whole bottom of my tomato. I need to prune out as soon as possible and cure with the baking soda spray. I will talk more about baking soda spray in a bit. Uh, but we'll have to do it before it's spread out uh, on other branches. And then I have dragon tongue beans. Also, this one need to harvest, and I maybe pull out the whole thing because I think it reached the max. Uh, it produced a lot of beans, and I don't think it will produce more beans. It look uh, really old, so we'll pull out and save some spot for other crops. And on this side, tomato, you guys, are growing so much look at that it's just so crowded again and not just that there's just a lot of powdery mildew on this one and then for my peppers they're doing well and i have this one i believe it's a black beauty either black beauty or the purple beauty and look at all of these tomatoes oh my god i'm snacking on it since i got back lots of them it's so delicious and look at this one also need to harvest uh not harvested yet i think it still grows some more and for the tomatoes i got this one is called uh it's sun gold oh my gosh so delicious it's now it's one of my favorite tomato it used to be chocolate sprinkle it's my number one but now this is my number one favorite you guys can see this powdery maldu it's spread to the stem which is the one thing that I really scare because usually when it's spread to the stem, it spread it fast. So look at all of these. This I need to prune up. I will show you guys how I do that. 
how I clear out those things and curing them uh, and make it look healthy again. And it's not really much thing to do for this one. Uh, just uh, prune out all of those infected leaf curing and I will tie all of those uh, up on the trellis. But move on to this bed. All my peppers are doing great. And this one drop peppers. Look at this. So gorgeous. Look at the colors. Oh my gosh. And I grow this from seed and it's like really small and tiny. Now it's growing so big. And these are all eggplants. Uh, and I got some more peppers here. So for this bed, I'm most eggplants and peppers. I have uh, fairy tale eggplants, Thai eggplants. And over here, I have a couple more Thai eggplants and Cambodian eggplants and wing beans. And these are all peppers. Uh, mini bell, uh, this one. And I have more. Those are, I don't know, sweet bananas. I think it is sweet bananas. Uh, I had to check the tag, but look, all a lot of peppers. And also growing well. And over this bed, you guys just look at my serrano peppers. I love serrano pickle. I will show you and share with you guys my recipe. So good. And if you like spicy, pickle serrano is the best because it's spicy and I love spicy. And for this bed, I have the two big serrano right here. It takes over half of the bed and then on the back I have a couple more peppers I have some um, this one is a purple a red perella and I have shishito and some onion and cilantro I just toss the seed there and it grows yeah and this one I think this one is shishito peppers and then more tomato here. This one I pruned some of the leaf out because it's so much. The leaf growing a lot, but no powdery melt do at all. And all my herbs down here also doing amazing. And dragon fruit. Oh, um, gee. Growing a lot. Look at that. For one week that I'm away from the garden, I came back everything's like my garden's like jungle growing so much and the beans look at that and growing so tall and it's already start to produce the bean now uh, and a lot of flowers so healthy not a single aphid or any other disease at all and just look at the beans it's producing the beans now i cannot wait for the pot to get bigger and show you guys those gem in there and yeah it's growing to the top now and for this bed my onion growing well it's growing a little bit slower than i thought uh, for one week uh, but it's it look healthy uh, and this one i have the dino kale i think it's a dino kale and the beans a little bit burned from the sun i think uh, just look at the leaf. I need to prune some of those leaves and I have um, this one bitter melons. Oh, they're growing long. I need to uh, tie them up on the trellis. Corn's also doing okay. And for this area, look at the sunflowers growing so tall. And I would say it's about between 8 to 10 feet tall now. Uh, because the fen is about 6-7 feet. And my tomato here surprisingly this bed it's like i have a lot of tomato i would say over 10 tomato plants in this bed but i didn't really find a lot of um, the powdery maldu only a couple leaf but this is my berry tomato you guys can see the flowers are so much uh, and yeah barely have anything at all so i would going to I, i'm going to do just um uh, pruning some of the leaf out and give them a little bit of fertilizer and pretty much it and my strawberry tower lucky 
grab a few of the uh, strawberry when <laughs> when I was gone but uh, everything still producing so well and produce a lot of runner and I put some of the runner in the pockets and let them grow uh, and just a lot of strawberry and look delicious I'm going to harvest make some strawberry popsicle for the kids they love strawberry popsicle um, and yeah look at that runner start growing and um, yeah a lot of runner everything looks so healthy and you guys I want to show you this this one called Perry Perry Wary, I think it's the strawberry that it's like very un unusual okay that happens and this is like seeing this thing it's like an eye-opening for me um, such a cool experience because so this is like the seed that is sprouting while it's in the strawberry which is amazing I was like whoa this is so cool and I need to cut it and show it to my kids and for uh, the uh, and if you guys want to check on the video on how I mix the soil and planting strawberry on this green stock I have a video I will link it in the, the description box so you guys can check that out or you can go to my uh, main page and look for the video I think I posted about a couple weeks ago and for this area I have some tomato this is a volunteer tomatoes I think the seed that drop around this area is the chocolate sprinkle but chocolate sprinkle is hybrid so I don't know if the tomato that growing is the same as the, the original plant and the strawberry over here are oh, doing so well okay so let's go to the other side of the garden so this is the main garden area and then it's move along over here the seating area um, yeah so today is like very nice and cool uh, love the weather um, so for this side I only have this wood box which is I have holy basil you know that I harvest a lot of holy basil this one I harvest last time like the whole entire thing and then this is the uh, marigold growing so tall and this one are growing from seed and I have some peppers this is a Thai chili peppers and over here is pumpkin pumpkin I don't really need to do anything there's no not a single powdery meldew at all because I just prune it and some of the pumpkins that I not have a chance to pollinate it are die so I only have a couple uh, but it's it look pretty healthy I think all I need to do just give them uh, fertilizer and water I don't need to prune anything and over here look at this this is tromboncino or uh, ram picante squash and I grow this every single season and this one how cool that you can enjoy the seedless uh, for the whole entire next they only have a little bit of seed on that bottom and you can leave it you can eat it green like this as a summer squash or you can let it ripe and turn brown and save it as a winter squash so which is really cool and look at my sunflowers they're growing so tall so the arbors is about eight feet uh, tall so the sunflowers right now I would say it about uh, 11 12 feet now because this is item uh, mammoth or giant and it can grow up to around 15 feet tall so it's really good really tall and shishito peppers look at the amount of peppers I love this so much and if you don't like spicy this is for you because it tastes sweet and very very mild some of the the peppers not even spicy at all it's just sweet that's all uh, I will show you guys a couple of uh, the dish that you can make with shishito peppers and usually we do it like as appetizer it's really delicious and a lot of peppers 
and my corns are also doing great. All right, so let's get back to tomato. And I think the problem I have right now uh, mostly on tomato. My other plants are doing great, especially peppers, eggplants are very healthy. Uh, but tomato been battling with uh, powdery mildew since May. But since I was gone for the whole week, it started to take over the plants. So first, I have to remove all of the leaves. I mean, all of the leaves that infected with powdery mildew. Uh, and some of them, uh, some of the, the powdery mildew spread to the stem as well, as you guys can see in this area. But I will show you guys how I take care of those, uh, this problem. It's very easy and it's manageable, okay? So first, just prune them all out, uh, and this year, this season, my squash and zucchini are doing so well uh, with powdery mildew. Not a single spot. I think because of I start to grow them vertically very early of the season and prune them regularly. It's very important. I have the whole video on how to grow squash and zucchini vertically, so you guys can check that out. Uh, and uh, yeah, so right now I'm going to prune uh, and then tie them up. Some of the, the vine uh, fall off, so I will tie them to the trellis and prune them all out and I will show you guys how I treat them. And this is on the other side of the trellis arch and you guys can see that all the bottom leaves are covered up with powdery mildew. So I'm going to prune all those leaves out and luckily it's not spread to the stem yet. And this is the baking soda spray and this baking soda spray is the um, mixture of one tablespoon of baking soda with one gallon of water. Mix it well and spray it through the stem. If you have some on the leaf, make sure you spray it on the leaf too. But I don't really have any infected on the leaf because I pruned it all out. Uh, so I only treat the stem. It's easy process and it's all done. And I will spray every day for the next couple day or few days, I would say. But be careful when you spray. The timing is very crucial. So I, I normally spray in the late afternoon when the sun all go down or in the evening uh, because if you spray in the morning and then the sun come out it will burn your plants. Uh, I learned from my mistake because when I first started my garden I sprayed in the morning uh, follow up the online information that I found and it's my plants burn so really uh, so I spray uh, in the evening it's working for me really well. All right, so I'm done with tomato and move along to uh, lettuce. So I will uh, cover my lettuce bed with the shade cloth. I'm using the PVC pipe that I bought from Home Depot. And uh, I bought the long one, the long piece. It's a lot cheaper. And then I cut it into the length that I uh, prefer to fit each of my raised bed. But before I cover up with the shade cloth, I have to clean up. Uh, the lettuce because some of the leaves got burns and damaged from the sun while I was gone and uh, also from the bugs uh, roly-poly I believe so I clean out all those side leaves uh, so because lettuce the more you prune the more you harvest the more it grow the centerpiece will keep growing and it growing fast that's why during summer you have to harvest them more often otherwise it's going to go to bowl really quick so right now i will you know try to clean up all the bottom uh that leaf uh clear them all out and before give them some fertilizer and all of the scrap that i just threw now i just toss it in the compost don't throw away so nothing waste at all over here okay I usually, uh, my compost, I feed my worms with all the food uh, scrap or vegetable scrap that I prune out from the garden, which is perfect. Toss it in the compost. And next up is fertilizer. 
I'm using fish fertilizer because it's high in nitrogen and nitrogen will work great with leafy green. Lettuces, bok choy, spinach, and I'm using fish fertilizer. So I just, I don't use a lot, just use a little bit. And this, this brand I'm using once a month. Uh, and after that, I always sprinkle a little bit of water to, you know, fish fertilizer is very smelly. So I just wash them off uh, and then use cover up with the shade cloth. For shade cloths, I use, uh, I would recommend the 50% or 275% protection. It just depends on the area that you're growing. Uh, if you want to grow, I live in zone 10B, uh, Southern California. I grow lettuce all year round, even though throughout summer. Uh, it just need a little bit more protection. So I use the shade cloths and I pick the area in the garden that have a lot of shade. So this area receive morning sun, which is really good. Uh, and during the summer, especially midsummer, sometimes morning sun is really hot. That's why I need to cover up with shade cloths all summer long. Okay, and uh, some of the area that I grow lettuces that have a lot of sun, I double the shade cloths. And I water them a little bit in the morning and a little bit in the evening. Uh, and yeah, and then your lettuce will survive all summer long and harvest more often. The more it harvests, the more it grows. Otherwise, your lettuce will go to bolt really quick during summer. And for this bed, I don't really need to do anything much because everything looks so healthy. I maybe need to pull out the beans because it's been producing beans for a couple months now. I think it just reached to the end uh, of the cycle. Uh, I need to prune all of those beans. Oh my God, it's producing a lot of beans. We have a lot of these dragon tongue beans. Been harvested in May. Uh, so I will just going to pull them all out. Just look at that. Looks so healthy. And give them a little bit of fish fertilizer. Uh, I have over here on the some of the soybeans, a couple peppers and a couple eggplants. Uh, I haven't fertilized this bed for about three weeks now uh, so and always wash out with water because it will be less smelly and if you have pet or you don't want to attract rodent at night too with the smell so wash them all out and my dog usually go crazy with the smell so washing them out before uh, after you fertilize it's it's really help and yeah that's just pretty much it for this bed and fava beans i need to harvest this because just look at that super chunky and this is a little bit late usually i love to harvest them when it's really young so i can eat the whole pot but i think this is a little too late to eat the whole pots because the pot's getting a little um, woody now so let me show you the inside the inside is really nice and the peel uh, it's really spongy and smooth and then the bean itself the pot it's really big and you can add into soup or you can eat it raw but don't eat too much and I will also going to harvest this one and pull the whole plant out and oh my gosh this one are so big and I love them to do uh, to uh, make stir fry lemongrass with some beef so delicious and it's so crunchy but the thing is, all of those purple, beautiful stripe will be gone, will be fade away when you cook. So uh, yeah, it will be turning into a green beans. That's how sad. I wish the colors stay. So I harvest them a lot from the plant the, uh, on the other side of the bed and then this one too. And I have a lot more in the Ziploc bag that I save in the refrigerator. Alright guys, so I will end the video right here because I just don't want to keep you guys too long in just one video. I will make the part two, so stay tuned and thank you so much for watching.